Previously on Resident Evil Zero, Rebecca was being poisoned! So it basically means you just have to run out of the room and uh, deal with the poison status. Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to Resident Evil Zero. And as I just mentioned beforehand, yes, the poison status is a thing in this game. You uh, gotta collect the blue herbs, do a thing with them. Because of bloody course you will. Uh, the only room that really causes that is, well, uh, that room. Of course, you also have the tarantula enemies that can induce poison status, which is why uh, some editing will be needed. But no need to worry, because we have some handy-dandy blue herbs right here. As well as the first instance of using Rebecca's medical kit to mix up some chemicals. Except not quite. We do get the memo and documents as to how exactly you meant to use Rebecca's medical kit uh, right now and here. Now and here. Here and now. There again. Uh, but yes, well, it, it's nothing to do with the hose, mind you, uh, compared to what you might be thinking. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of weird, really. Like, I mean, you're basically mixing different chemical colours, like, uh, to make different solutions. This is more of an endgame sort of puzzle, so for those of you wondering whether or not Rebecca's chemistry set, whatever, is going to come into handy uh, right then and now, wow, what is wrong with my fucking vocabulary? It's fucking all over the shop. Many whirlets as I'm missing from my database, and, uh, yeah, this note is basically also going into that, that basically they're trying to figure out some of James Marcus's formulas, and, uh, basically it's all gone to shop. Yeah, whatever. This commentary is gonna, this commentary this part is gonna be fucking fun, because apparently I can't even string together two fucking sentences without devolving into gibberish. My primary language, English is my second language. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, the main thing I was trying to say, without needless sacral bebel, is that. Uh, don't worry too much about the chemistry mixing or whatever, it's really more of an in-game thing, so uh, keep it sleazy, stay freaky, and uh, just don't worry too much. Although uh, it is important that you do collect the green chemical from uh, that part of the facility, because you might just need it. And anyway, this is the PROPER way to solve the chess puzzle piece game thing, whatever, that I failed to do, because I'm stupid. I would tell you which piece you're meant to move, but I don't actually know chess well enough to uh, know any of this stuff. As I mentioned in the previous part, I, the closest I ever came to winning was a stalemate, so, uh, yeah, even then, that was also fucking years ago, man, and that was so many whiskey sours ago, my memory is naught but failing at this point. In fact, my memory might be a bit shoddy, but I do believe when I entered that stalemate, the entire universe was destroyed. Which would be interesting, if true. But yeah, shift it into the right position. That handgun bullet has nothing to do with anything. And then you'll pretty much open the desk to get a book that contains the stuff. Frog in the log house and the thing that Jack built. Regurgitated commentary that I've pretty much talked about all before. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing in this segment is, well, uh, basically some important documents and lore. Luscious, tasty, delicious lore that we can sink our teeth into and actually gives us something new to talk about with Resident Evil Zero. Huzzah! The filler commentary is done! Whoopee! But imagine it's not over yet, because we've still got pointless talking and psycho bebel to keep us occupied. Okay, I had to kind of briefly stop there, because you remember in Resident, e Resident Evil 2 where I had a very cute, adorable cat here to co-commentate with me? Well, now she's back again, so introducing my little baby, Chaos. Hello, girl. I wonder if the microphone can pick up the purrs. Well, maybe you couldn't, but uh, anyway, she's here now, so what do you think, little cat? Meow, this game needs more cats. Then they could have taken care of the T-Virus. But, uh... Yeah, on to more important matters. This is basically delving into the main plot as to how uh, Umbrella basically found the progenitor virus. Uh, the progenitor virus, of course, being what they found in Africa that became the basis of the T-virus and pretty much the precipice of all of Umbrella's experiments up to this point. At Resident Evil 5 goes into a little bit more detail about this, about how the mother virus was found in Africa. You know, it was derived from a flower that was meant to give, I think it was immortality or superhuman abilities within humans. 
uh, basically just sort of think about how Umbrella's, or at least uh, Oswald Spencer's primary goals for the whole thing, was intended to be, well, basically Albert Wesker, or what presumably would have been the Tony Redgrave version of uh, Resident Evil 4. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much something to consider. Meow, it was also meant to turn people into cats. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that throughout the commentary. I am trying to give people as much of a chance to read this information as they possibly can, but at the same time though, uh, again, I don't really know people's reading speeds, so yeah, if you can't read fast enough, pause the video and uh, just ignore my waffling. I'm pretty much just giving the Cliff Notes version where basically, after a time, James Marcus became bored with this progenitor virus and basically became fixated on testing his research on, well, some of the more primordial, uh, elements of, you know, bio biology and evolution as such, uh, primarily with bugs and, well, in turn also, leeches, which he became really obsessed with. Aww, cute baby cat. Yes, yeah, settle down, girl. You're nice and cuddly, and you're watching a very scary horror game with a bunch of zombies and creatures that you'd, well, I mean, let's be honest, here, you'd probably win against because you're a very ferocious cat. You'd like to hunt, and you'll scratch the zombies, and eat a lot of the creatures. Like the birds, that are your arch enemies, and you will eat them all and yell at them. I'm sorry, that's just the fact that my cat is here, and I tend to turn into a fucking cuddly ball of fluff whenever she's here. Maybe I should have her do commentaries more often. Meow. I could be the star of the channel. Yes, you two will be happy with my presence. Yes. Oh. Yes. I hope you can hear her purring, by the way, because she is currently on my lap, situated night for uh, quite lovingly. And uh, don't worry, though, we are going to be getting on with the plot, and we are going to be getting a few more cutscenes as well toward the end of the part, so... Yeah, rest assured, a lot of the filler was pretty much out of the way, but I mean, it was uh, a bit of a pacing barrier, but again, I've already talked about that in the previous parts, so you probably want to talk about new and exciting observations, and... Uh, yeah, since we did also get the other wing for the Dark Angel to balance out the Light Angel, yeah, we are pretty much going to go off and solve some puzzles, but before we do that, I also have... And I think I did this purely out of the fact that I just wanted to get as much exploration. Or I guess maybe I did it to highlight what is pretty much our endgame goal to bridge this area to the next one, but... Yeah, we have an area that we're going to be exploring uh, towards the end of this part, which, again, is new and exciting, but we also have a pretty much our endgame goal, which is involving... Uh, you know, the collect three of a thing to access a new area. Again, Resident Evil 1 with the emblems, uh, you know, Code Veronica with the navy proof seals. Bada bing, we do the thing, and it's pretty much involving going up here. Oh no, more infestants. The cuddle bugs. Uh, to make up for the fact that we had a very lackluster boss fight that didn't last very long. Because I'm playing on easy mode. Oh, the shame, the shame. Yes. You're judging me, aren't you, cat? You're thinking, ooh, bugs. Well, I'd like to eat them and scratch them up and then put them as a gift for a human. Because your hunting instincts suck and that's why we want to show you how it's done. Uh, which is actually a little bit of a cat fact. So, uh, yeah, they apparently think we suck at hunting and whenever they bring you little lizards or like little bugs as gifts, they either do it to reward you for treating them well or because they think your hunting instincts suck and because they see humans as big lumbering cats. Uh, they just want to show you how it's done, because deep down, cats are judgy, but they care. Yes. And you care, don't you, little cats? But yeah, this little observatory thing is pretty much, uh, objective of the now. Get three of a thing, put them into the place, and that door unlocks over there. Uh, simple, and something I guess I should have shown off for posterity's sake, but all the same, though, it's, uh... Yeah... It is what it is. It was a bit of a distraction, I probably should have paced it a little bit better during my exploration, but uh, there was really no need for me to go here until I needed to go here, because we can't get any of the different proofs at this point. Okay. But yes, in the meantime though, we're pretty much just uh, finally gonna balance the scales of justice! So yeah, hopefully we can tip the balance in our favour. Yes. You're paying very close attention to the screen, Cat, so, uh, are you legitimately invested in Resident Evil, or, uh, hmm, it's odd. I mean, they're usually, she only ever gets this way whenever she sees, like, uh, television shows with very bright colours that I 
I guess, uh, more identifiable to, like, a cat's perception of colors? I'm not too sure about that, actually. It's kind of curious, but, uh, yeah, I guess she's just as enthralled about the game as I am. Which is kind of adorable, because she usually does sit on my lap whenever I'm playing video games. Because she's a cute little cat that loves her human. So, now we have our secret entrance. And, uh, yeah, this is also gonna lead us into the basement, which does kind of bring to mind about how... Well, I suppose a bit more cavalier about his experiments James Marcus was compared to Oswald Spencer that at least... Well, I mean, I suppose from a business standpoint tried to pretend some degree of secrecy, but... Uh, yeah, apparently compared to the Ashford or Spencer debacles, yeah. The kid not for the secrecy, whereas Spencer at least tried to cover up his tracks nicely, whereas uh, Ashford even mainly used prisoners in his POW camp. Marcus, he cares not for the common man, and uh, basically just seemed to use whoever stumbled across his experiments, or even his own employees, as we'll learn uh, much later in the game, so... Yes, everybody's fair game when it comes to Marcus's children. <laughs> Oh yeah, also I get poisoned at this part, which requires me to go down the stairs and go back up the stairs, and uh... It's all because of the returning tarantulas. At least they think they're meant to be tarantulas, they're otherwise just spider enemies. Well, I mean, I suppose I'll give it this compared to... I don't know, your typical Devil May Cry, or even this game with the fucking leech zombies. At least they don't spawn little spider babies that will give you little bits of pip damage, so... There's that, I guess. Although, then again, yep, there's the poison, unfortunately. So, yeah, after dealing with this little spidorpion, we pretty much gotta go all the way up back. But don't worry, I'm pretty much editing out the point where I go off and get a blue herb and come all the way back. So it's it's pretty much looking like Rebecca's just getting a cough exercise in by going up the stairs, and then deciding to go all the way back down. Yes. I feel like a supervillain right now, watching through the screen, petting an evil cat. <laughs> I understand that a lot of this is probably stuff that the audience can't see, but I mean, if you could hear the pose, you do know that this adorable little catty baby is here. Yes. Also, that door is locked. So instead, we'll have to see things from another perspective. In this creepy basement that was probably there long before Marcus was here. I mean, other than that, or they all just use very similar George Trevor architecture, but yes, these are all the people that were either from Umbrella's facilities or were transferred here, which is, uh, hmm. Yes, uh, where they initially came from. And again, you do kind of get this all throughout the series, really, like some people being on death row as prisoners or. Uh, families that were kidnapped from less reputable sources, and, uh, yeah, one of the things about the Resident Evil 2 remake, actually, the, uh, one that actually really did creep me out was how they used, like, the orphanage as a front for Umbrella's experiments. All the kids that wouldn't get adopted were, uh, shall we say, t virused I don't know. I mean, that was uh, actually one of the few original editions of the remake that I actually did quite like for Resident Evil 2, but it's neither here nor there in this case. And, uh, yeah, this is also coming up to a bit of a pl uh, plot point. Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose it is, because, I mean, it is actually where the action of the game does start to pick up a little bit, and things actually get rather exciting, but you didn't hear that from me. Well, maybe you did, but you won't ever prove it. Also, I probably should have just gone in here to get the blue herb, but I couldn't quite remember where one was, and I didn't want my health to drain anymore, so I'm stupid. Goddamn motherfucking stupid. But anyway, uh, yeah, by the way, when your uh, ammo threshold hits a certain amount, yeah, it pretty much splits into two, so... Yeah, you can't have, like, 999 bullets, you only have a set amount, which is quite bizarre. And, again, a little bit more bullshitty here than it would be in other Resident Evil games, because of the fact that, well... Yeah, you lack item space and places to put items, except for where you drop them, so... Yeah, it's a little bit pish, to be honest, but... Yeah. What could have been in there? Well, basically, it's one of those things where only Rebecca can do this. So, pretty much just jump on Billy's shoulders and he'll fly there with you. 
I'm almost there. I'm glad I could be of service. Time to go inside. Well now, this is giving us some very, uh, Code Veronica-esque implications, and, uh, hey, or, uh, you know, uh, there was an, uh, Iron Maiden over there. Iron Maiden? Excellent! Blow. And, uh, this is also meant to be hinting towards, well, okay, what was initially meant to be hinting towards, uh, a certain boss monster that was gonna show up in, uh, one of the earlier stages of the game called Wesker's Monster? I will elaborate on this a little bit later when we see the enemies themselves in the next part, but... In the meantime, we do have bigger fish to fry, by which I mean, uh, preparing for something, and because I knew what happens ahead of time, yeah, we're gonna be taking Billy on a bit of a walk. And I probably should've cut this down, but I didn't. So now we're gonna have to fill up the time. But yeah, uh, what happens next is basically a race against time, so this is ostensibly me trying to cut out the middleman, and get as much of a head start, because uh, on my first playthrough, and I'll elaborate this a little bit more when we finally get to it, yeah, I failed this, because I went down the wrong path and I thought you had to do something completely different, but it turns out that uh, I ran out of time, and Rebecca didn't make it out so well. Sniff. Sob. A boo-hoo. A boo-hoo-hoo. Boo-hoo. See? Uh, but yeah, you don't really need to do much with this, it's pretty much just me getting a head start. Uh, you probably won't know what's gonna happen until you, well, get there, but... Basically, my only advice to you is to go as far as the Freddy Krueger boiler, and uh, you should be pretty well good. And it seems that my cat wants to be let out, because even she is ashamed of me. Oh, the shame, the shame of failing in this one segment of the game. Also, it's quite fitting that I had to let the cat out on the door opening sequence. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, made sense, but, uh, yeah, in the meantime, basically, I mean, I pretty much already said this, so I don't even know why, it's, it's literally just a few seconds for you and, like, a minute or so for me, so why am I even talking about things that I can't even remember for a minute? Who knows, but now we're back in Freddy Krueger's boiler room. And this really should have been where the Nightmare on Elm Street survival horror game should have been. But this does also tie into the puzzle that Rebecca has to solve, because you remember that power-solving puzzle from Resident Evil 2? Well, it's back with a vengeance. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much just flip the switches to get it to a specific threshold. Make sure you don't overload the generators, or else, uh, you'll be paying for Umbrella's power bills. But yeah, this puzzle isn't really much to speak of. It's kind of derivative, to be perfectly honest, so it's pretty much just, uh... Experiment with the switches, flick them until you get to the right frequency. It can take a couple attempts, which I am cutting out. I'm only showing you what happens if you fail once, or fail twice, evidently, so... I'm stupid, but yeah, you will be seeing a successful attempt in due time, my dear. In due time. <laughs> yes, but, uh... I don't know, the puzzle kind of is what it is, really. Nothing too interesting. One could even say it's, uh, mm, yes, a bit old hat, mm, a bit tardy, what what, mm, yes, mm, yes, a fine vintage. Uh, but that's pretty much all she wrote. I am trying to be careful here so I don't fuck up and don't waste any more time because I am stingy on recording space and, oh boy, these parts, they be lengthy beasts. There we go. We did it. Whoopee, wee-haw, woo-hoo, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that pretty much unlocks the doors. That also restores the power and stops the steam vents from... Actually, no, we don't see that quite yet. There we go. So, on that note, I am Solid Scully, keep a new medal, and enjoy the cutscene that will lead Rebecca to peril. You are wasting your time. I have already claimed this place for myself which means you are trespassing. And I am very territorial. <laughs> I'm back in for the final letter came here for the winter 
with it If you met it, just the one I am on I need a minute to eliminate forever What the everyday bullshit that I think you have done You're impossible, like oh fuck It's like a megalomaniacal jab on my jaw You fucking touch me, I will rip you apart I'll reach in and take a bite out of that shit you 